Hello everyone. So the topic is projectile motion. So first we discuss the linear motion. So this is the object. It is moving in this direction. So velocity has just one component, which is a horizontal. So this is one dimension motion and it is called linear motion. Similarly, if the object is falling down or moving up, so velocity has just one component, which is vertical. This is also one dimension motion. So these are the two types of the linear motion. So linear motion is actually a one dimension motion. And next is a circular motion. Object is moving in a circle. Force and acceleration are acting toward the center of the circle and the velocity is making tension to the circle. Mean velocity is making 90 degree angle with force and acceleration. This is circular motion. Now come to the projectile motion. Motion in which Velocity has both components together. I mean, Vx and dy. So it is two dimensional motion. So the projectile motion is a two-dimensional motion because the velocity has both components Vx and Vy. Do remember Vx horizontal velocity which is equal to V cos theta is only responsible for the horizontal motion. And Vy component, which is V sine theta, is responsible only for the vertical motion. Now suppose one object is thrown from this point A in this direction. This is the velocity V. It is neither horizontal nor vertical because it is making some angle theta with the horizontal. So this is called Vx component and this is called Vy component. So this velocity has two components. So this is projectile motion. Now, what is the direction of the motion? What is the path of this projectile motion? It goes like this. And this path, which is followed by the projectile is called trajectory. So this is the suppose point B. So here is a Vx. This is Vy at the top of this motion. Vx is there, Vy zero. So Vx in this direction, Vy in the opposite direction. And here, this is Vx and this is Vy. So look, in this motion, Vx is almost constant, both in magnitude and direction. A reason? In the absence of air resistance, Horizontal force is zero. No horizontal force acting on the object. So no horizontal acceleration. That's why there is no change in the horizontal velocity. Thus, 
horizontal velocity vx which is v cos theta is now look at the vy it is changing both in magnitude and direction so in projectile motion vy v sine theta it changes both in magnitude and direction reason in the absence of the air or you can write air resistance only force which is acting vertically is weight and weight is producing acceleration due to gravity so due to this g which is here 9.81 positive negative meter per second square this vertical velocity v by is changing okay so v by is changing due to vertical force w and the v x is constant because there is no horizontal force next pose this is the height and it is represented by h a ball is placed here it is kicked horizontally then it makes projectile motion and it lands here look it has covered two distances one distance is the horizontal distance it is covered due to horizontal component of the velocity which is horizontal and this vertical height which is fallen by the object is covered due to the vertical velocity so horizontal distance is covered due to the horizontal speed horizontal velocity and the vertical distance is covered due to vertical velocity now in the absence of the air time taken by the projectile to cover this trajectory is pose t then time taken for this object to free fall for this height h will be t same time mean in the absence of the air time of the free fall from the certain height is exactly equal to the time of the projectile from the same height okay if it is kicked horizontally with a greater velocity definitely it will change its trajectory but it will take it will take the same time this is very very important point in the absence of the air time of the free fall for the certain height is exactly equal to the time of the projectile from the same height time will remain same okay now suppose object is dropped from the height h if it is released vertically down then the initial velocity is zero in the absence of the air acceleration is constant so we can write v is equal to u plus a t now this is vertical motion so we will use the vertical components of the velocity so vertical velocity v by initial vertical velocity zero acceleration vertical is g time taken t so this v by which is v sine theta is equal to g t so this time is equal to v sine theta over g so this is the equation for the time of the free fall and according to the rule this time same this time same it is also v sine theta over g so this is the time of the projectile motion from top to bottom but 
if we take the complete motion from bottom to top and then top to bottom, then the total time taken will be T from A to B and the same time T from B to C. So the total time of the flight will be T plus T, it becomes two times T, mean it is two V sine theta over G. So one side, bottom to top or top to bottom, this is V sine theta over G, but for the full projectile, it is 2t mean 2v sine theta over g. Next, if this is the height and the object is moving in this direction, so this height h is the maximum height which is lost by the object or which is gained by the object. So according to the formula, Adding to the formula, S is equal to UT one by two AT square, this vertical distance H, initial vertical velocity zero, one by two, acceleration vertical is G, and the time taken is V sine theta over G. It's already proved with square. Then height gained by the projectile is one by two G V square sine square theta over G square one G cancel. So height is equal to V square sine square theta over two G. So this is the height of the projectile, this one. Suppose it is thrown from this point, so this is the height gained. If it is thrown from this point to the ground, then this is the last height. So the formula for this height is V square sine square theta over 2G. Now V sine theta is the vertical component of the velocity. Now similarly, if the object is thrown like this, direction of the velocity is this, it's making some angle theta with this. So this is Vx component, this is Vy component. At the top, Vy component becomes zero, but the Vx component is there. Now, the distance covered by the object in the horizontal direction this, which is called the range, it can be calculated by using the same equation, S is equal to UT one by two AT square. So horizontal distance is range, horizontal velocity is Vx, and the time taken from this point to this point is two T, because from this point to this point, it is T, then this, this is T. So we can write here, double time 2t plus 1 by 2 into look this is the horizontal motion we have to take all values for the horizontal motion look horizontal velocity we have done here is constant mean horizontal acceleration is zero so we will substitute horizontal acceleration zero into t square it is cancelled so R is equal to Vx mean V cos theta, two times T mean V sine theta over G, so which is already derived, that T is equal to V sine theta over G. So R is equal to V cos theta, two V sine theta over G. So R is equal to V square over G, two times sine theta into cos theta. But 
this portion is sine double theta. Sine two theta is two sine theta into cos theta. So we can write b square over g into sine two theta. This is the formula to cover the maximum distance which is covered by the object projectile horizontally. But if half projectile is given, I mean half distance is required, then similarly distance is equal to Vx into T not 2T. The distance horizontal is covered due to the horizontal velocity. So horizontal velocity multiplied by time and the time is t because this time taken and this time taken, this time taken in the absence of the air, same. Now, R is equal to V square over G sine two theta. For example, maximum range of the projectile is required, then we will use V square over G and sine two theta value of maximum, which is one. So maximum value of two theta is one. So the R max is equal to V square over G. So what is the condition for the maximum? We have to substitute sine two theta is equal to one. So two theta is equal to sine inverse one. I mean two theta is equal to 90 degree and theta is equal to then 45 degree mean for the maximum range, this is the condition. Now, in the absence of the air, suppose this is the trajectory. Now, in the presence of the air, if the air resistance is there, definitely it will affect the horizontal component. It will affect the vertical component. Horizontal velocity decreases, vertical velocity also decreases, so the new path in the presence of the air resistance will be this. So this is in air resistance, or with air. And the outer path is in the absence of air. 